A lot has changed if you were looking at a TV review yesterday and you're looking at it again today. There's a new structure, new scores, new tests, and even updates to old ones. We've reworked every single scoring spline on almost every single test to align our scoring with the modern TV market and with modern expectations. Hi, I'm Sam, the senior display tester from Ratings.com, where instead of testing new models, me and the display team have been working on our biggest undertaking yet. In this video, we'll go into the changes myself, the engineers, and the writing team have been working on for the past nine months. Then we'll turn the tables and ask you for your help to keep us improving, so stick around. One of the main reasons we decided to take on such a big project was feedback we received from you, the community. As pointed out by the community, it was really hard to tell the difference between the high-end TVs. TVs have gotten a lot better in the past few years, and the difference between a C4 and a G4 on our old test was, well, 0.2. Hard to say which one you should buy when one is significantly more expensive, but only scoring 0.2 better. Same for the S90D and the S95D. They even scored exactly the same. So which one should you get when one is way cheaper? It was a hard question to answer and the top end of the whole scoring spline ended up getting crunched together. So what we decided to do was to realign the scores with modern expectations and the modern TV market. So what we did is we went through the review piece by piece by piece by piece, looked at every single comparison and asked ourselves, well, how much should that really score out of 10 today? So a TV that's only 750 nits on a 10% slide in HDR used to score an eight, which is pretty great. But that was from about five years ago. Times have changed, TVs have gotten a lot brighter. So today, should that still be an eight out of 10? Probably not. We reevaluated the score, dropped it down to about a 6.7, which is more in line with modern expectations. Since if you go on our table tool, you have to scroll pretty far down to find a TV that's only 750 nits on a 10% slide. So we repeated that process over and over and over again, sitting in a meeting room for almost two weeks straight going over every single score in the review and asking ourselves that same question. What should it score today? Once we were finished with fixing all of the scores for each individual test on the review, which there are hundreds, then we looked at the boxes each of those tests was in. So for HDR brightness, for example, how much should each of the components weigh? Well, we used to have a relatively even split, but that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Sustained brightness isn't as important as peak brightness in HDR, since usually when you're watching content, you're not watching just a white square sitting there for three minutes. So we remove the weight from sustained brightness, put it all on peak brightness, and then put more weight on the lower window sizes, since that represents the sort of highlight detail you want to get in an HDR scene. So after fixing all of the boxes and making sure they're all aligned, a reasonable question to ask is, well, won't we just have to do this again in another few years? And the answer is yes. As the TV market continues to evolve and as people's desires and expectations continue to evolve, so will we. We need to continue evolving and we need to keep updating our scores. We like to do an update to our TV testing every year. We like to add new tests, we like to fix old ones, but these sorts of big undertakings where we revamp the whole review, we will have to do every few years as the market evolves to keep up with modern trends. Even though that was a lot of work, we didn't stop there. We also added new tests. Our reflections test used to be one box that said, how good are your reflections? Now it's four different boxes to encapsulate different components of reflections. Our response time test used to capture 12 transitions. Now we do 72 transitions in multiple settings at multiple refresh rates. Then we take those new and improved tests in those new and improved boxes, and we've decided to re-examine the top of the review as well, where our usages and our new performance usages are. So we revamped all of the scores up there, changed the weights of what goes into them and how much everything weighs, and created these performance usages so that you can look at simple aspects of the performance of the TV, independent of whether or not you're using it in perhaps a bright room or not. After fixing the top of the review, all of the scores, all of the boxes underneath, that also required us to basically rewrite almost the entire review. So the writing team has been hard at work rewriting basically the entire review for all of these TVs for a second time so that the text reflects all of these changes. A major change like this does come with some downsides, mainly a break in comparability between TVs on our new test bench and our old test benches. So just keep in mind that if you are looking at a TV on our new 2.0 test bench, the scores can't be one-to-one -one compared with a TV on our older test benches. You can't still look at the underlying raw data since a lot of those tests haven't changed, but the score associated to it no longer makes that much sense. But even after all of that, there are still gaps in the information you need to make a purchasing decision, mainly processing and motion handling. You've pointed this out many, many, 
many times. And we've been listening. We've been invested in trying to solve this problem, but the solution is elusive, at least objectively. We can, of course, evaluate this subjectively, but that's even harder to do year over year over year. We already test for things like response time, stutter, judder, for motion, but that doesn't really paint the whole picture about what TV actually looks better in motion. As far as processing, we can evaluate things like the EOTF tracking, the upscaling, the low quality content smoothing, and it does give us an idea of what's going on, but it's hard to pinpoint exactly what makes it look better all of the time. So we need your help. We've already started developing our newest test bench, test bench 2.1, intended to tackle these gaps. Now's the time for feedback. What objective aspects of processing and motion handling would you like to see in our upcoming test bench? This will take a while, so you do have some time to leave a comment in the forums of our website or on this video. You can also head over to our new Discord server to chat with us. There will be an invite link down below. If you're looking for more details on the specifics of what changed, we have a change log and an article you can read as well. The links for all that good stuff are down below in the description. Until next time, though I don't know if they'll let me host another one of these, I'm Sam from Ratings.com, where you can help us help you find the best product for your needs. Even though that was a lot of work, that's not all we did. Don't worry, sorry. Let me take that again. Why? Yeah, but that page would be better. Okay! Oh, yeah. oh wow! All right! <laughs>